Ah, thank you. Thank you very much, and good morning. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, at the 17th Annual Breakfast of Hope for the Northwest Kidney Center. I think that most of you know uh, that basketball has played a huge role in my life. You know, uh, not the only role, but a huge one. And life's lessons began very early for me. Uh, they began back in Brooklyn. I grew up in the Bed-Stuyvesant uh, neighborhood, and uh, I had the guidance of a very strong mother. Uh, my dad died when I was five, and we had lots of challenges. And I decided uh, to meet as many of them as I could, uh, and, and particularly because of my mother, who was a very strong person, okay? Uh, I like to tell people that she did not, did not believe in timeouts, okay? <laughs> and <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. We, <laughs> you know, we, we had to learn very early. And with her guidance and the guidance of some friends, I, I learned very early in life that there were many, many, many challenges. And the decision to meet as many of them as I could would be mine. Uh, my mother taught me, uh, all of us, not just me, my sisters and brothers, to be proud, to be responsible. She said, let honesty and integrity define your character. So I began to realize that if I wanted to have a positive impact on my life, I would have to arm myself. That's right, arm myself with all the power that knowledge gives because knowledge is power. And it's only achieved through education and life's experience. We were taught discipline at a very early age and uh, we were taught by the Sisters of Mercy when I was in elementary school. They showed no mercy but <laughs> But they, they were great teachers, okay? And I had a couple of role models early in my life. One was a priest by the name of Father Tom Mannion, who uh, was our neighborhood priest. My mother went to church every day. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it must have worked because we all turned out okay. <laughs> but uh, Father Mannion, we used to, uh, as kids, call them iron hands because when he grabbed a hold of you, you couldn't get away. And, uh, and my mother always wanted him to kind of impress upon me that I should be hanging out with the right people. So, so I had him as a guidance. The other role model in my life was uh, Jackie Robinson. I, I was a, you know, a huge baseball fan at that time. If you grew up in Brooklyn, uh, everybody rooted for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And we had three teams in New York at that time, the, the Dodgers, the Yankees, and the Giants. And Jackie Robinson lived in my neighborhood, so I used to have to deliver groceries uh, to his home, and I got a chance to meet him. And I, uh, I was always amazed at the character of his. Uh, he, he was not a guy who was gonna let anybody influence him. You know, he had great character, great intelligence, you know, and uh, because of him, I always believed that I could make a difference, you know. Um, like Father Mannion, who when I was growing up, you know, and if I would get a little upset or something, he used to always say to me, you know, uh, who promised you? You know, like, did someone promise you life was going to be easy? And I began to realize that, yeah, I want to make a difference, okay? I wanted to meet people. So I learned my lessons very, very early. I had a great friend, a guy by the name of Tommy Davis, who uh, happened to play here for, I think, one or two years. He was with the Seattle Pilots when, the, when they first came here. And Tommy was at the end of his career, but he, we grew up and went to high school together. He was a uh, 
All-American baseball player and all high school All-American basketball. He was a great athlete. And uh, when we were growing up, he convinced me that uh, I should probably go to basketball and leave baseball alone. <laughs> and, and, and it was okay, it was all right. You know, I, uh, I thought I was a decent athlete. I batted three something, but Tommy at baseball batted over five something. He, he was an incredible athlete, you know, and uh, so uh, his dad was a huge baseball player, uh, loved baseball, and when uh, Jackie Robinson talked to Tommy, it was history. He signed with the Dodgers right away. But uh, so I was very, very lucky because I played a half a year of high school uh, basketball. I, you know, I went out for the team when I was a freshman, and uh, they had 15 guys on the team. I was number 15, and you know, and our coach was a guy named Mickey Fisher, and he only played eight. So I was a practice player. But that's okay because I began to learn the game and love the game. And uh, I would go to the playgrounds and started to really learn. And I tell everybody that back then on the playgrounds that we used to go to, a lot of college players would come down and work out. And, and I remember Wilt Chamberlain coming down to that playground, even though he was from Philadelphia. Um, a guy named Vinnie Cohen, who uh, was an All-American at Syracuse University. Uh, and uh, one Saturday when they let me play, you know, on Saturdays everybody played and they had crowds gather around the park to watch. And I had to guard Vinnie Cohen. So I'll never forget it because it was a great experience for me. Uh, I took the ball off of him. I blocked his shot. You know, I scored on him. And next thing I know, I was running to the pole. I was <laughs> laying on the ground. And, uh, but Vinny encouraged me uh, that I should keep playing. And uh, he apologized because people would agitate, you know, if you played well. But um, Vinny became a, a huge lawyer. Uh, he didn't uh, go to play professional basketball. I was very lucky. I uh, received a scholarship to uh, Providence College. And uh, when I went to Providence College, I'll never forget uh, there, uh, it was taught by uh, uh, Dominican fathers. And they used to, uh, I remember the, the first one I had for logic, it was a Father Heath. He was a submarine commander during World War II. And a uh, big tall guy, and uh, the, we had to fill out all these uh, attendance cards. And I'll never forget that uh, first day he said, uh, Mr. Wilkins and Mr. Whalen, Dick Whalen was a uh, guy who was also on the basketball team. He said, would you please stand up? So he and I stood up. He said, uh, I don't like basketball players. <laughs> so. Don't ever cut my class without a good reason. You may sit down, gentlemen. <laughs> and so I, you know, I said, okay, wow, I, I got the message, you know. But stuff happens. Uh, during the year, uh, we were playing Brandeis University. I sprained my ankle. And, but also, uh, I was going to cut class one time because we were studying for a big history exam. And, uh, and not only me but several guys in the class cut to study for this exam. And uh, when we, it was like on a Friday. So Monday, when we attended class again, the logic class, Father Heath was really upset. And he just looked at everybody. And you could tell, because he was pacing back and forth. And finally he said, I'm going to flunk everybody in this class, except for one man. And that's because he couldn't walk to class. <laughs> he was talking about me, but I could have walked to class. I mean, it was, <laughs> but I wasn't going to say anything to him about it. And because all the classmates kind of looked at me, you know, they knew. 
but I never cut his class again. It was a great lesson that I learned. Uh, Providence College was a great, great education for me. Uh, the Dominican Fathers were great teachers, and uh, I learned quite early to be accountable, to be res responsible, you know. And, uh, and I remember when I graduated, I was very fortunate. I got drafted by the St. Louis Hawks, and uh, I was a first round pick for them. And, uh, and I'll never forget uh, that first year, uh, we were playing the Celtics. And back then, Bob Cousy was like the LeBron James or the Greek freak today. These, these were great players. And I was guarding Bob Cousy, and I took the ball off of him. A referee caught, blew his whistle. And I turned to him and I said, you know, how could you make a call like that? It was a clean steal. And the referee looked at me and he said, you can't take the ball off of Bob Cousy. You know? <laughs> and so I just took the ball and threw it up in the air. And he said to me, and if it comes down, it's going to cost you. So I, you know, you, you learn lessons very early. And, and I was learning mine. Uh, I played with the Hawks for six, seven years. And in 1969, we had a contract dispute. And uh, I refused to sign the contract they offered to me. And they were, the franchise was, was moved to Atlanta. And I got traded here to Seattle. And I came kicking and screaming. <laughs> but the, the reason I did was that uh, the Hawks were a playoff team every year. And Seattle was an expansion team. So I knew they weren't going to make the playoffs, you know. But, uh, but after one year playing here for our coach, Al Bianchi, who was a good guy, um, I was asked to be a player coach. And, uh, you know, I, uh, we had a general manager. His name was Dick Verdlieb. And I couldn't believe it when he asked me to be a player coach, you know. And uh, so I, you know, I just... I said, are you sure? You know, you must be crazy. <laughs> and uh, so I told my wife that I was going to be a player coach. And uh, those who know my wife, there's a couple of people here who know her. Winona, Winona knows my wife real well. But my wife said, when I told her that I was going to be a player coach, she said, you got to be either stupid or crazy. And she says, I know you're not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, I, I decided to, uh, that I would uh, be a player coach. It was a great experience for me, and, and I learned so much. Uh, I began to grow, and I began to learn and how to coach and how to work with young players, you know. And in 1978, I had, I was, uh, in 77, actually, I was traded. Uh, to the, um, Cleveland. And uh, when I came back, I took a job back with the Sonics and took over. Uh, well, actually, I was in the front office. And we had, uh, we had a coach. And uh, they had some possible trades that I didn't like. One was they were going to trade Fred Brown, and I stopped that. I, w I thought it was not a good trade. <laughs> uh, and we got Marvin Webster, Paul Silas, Gus Williams. These, these were outstanding young athletes who, uh, when they came to the Sonics in uh, 1978, uh, the team got off to a bad start. They were 5-17. And, 17. and uh, our owner asked me to take over and coach the team, so I did. I decided that... Uh, he said that, well, you know all these players, so you should coach them. Well, I took over. I did believe that we were pretty good or could be a pretty good team. And we got to the finals that year. And uh, we lost. But the next year, I truly believe that we could win the championship. And it was an incredible year. You know, it was unbelievable. Uh, and a lot of these young people who were on that championship team still live here, still contribute, still give back to our community. 
And, and that's something I learned very early, is that giving back to the community makes a difference. It helps people. And, you know, and that's why it's so nice to see all of you here supporting the Northwest Kidney Foundation. Uh, I have a brother-in-law who worked for the Einstein Kidney Center in New York. And he uh, administered you know, kidney dialysis. Uh, in fact, he has a niece who is related to me by marriage who uh, has uh, been getting dialysis for 24 years. That is truly, truly unbelievable when you think about it. And it helps the quality of life. Uh, and that's what the Kidney Foundation does. It helps so many people. Uh, and not just the dialysis, but the dialysis. But people are learning and starting to get transplants. And we're working on the cure. And we will have that cure sooner or later. Uh, and, and, that, and that's wonderful. I've been very fortunate, like I said, you know, uh, um, we, uh, I was one of the coaches. Uh, I coached uh, the Olympic gold medal team in 1992 and in 96. So I won two gold medals. And, you know, uh, life's experience has taught me all about success, you know, something that we all desire. And, and we have to learn to communicate effectively, to build a, uh, a good organization, to learn the res that respects the two-way street have confidence, show confidence, and, and be accountable, you know, and, and set realistic goals like the Northwest Kidney Foundation does. Uh, it helps so many people. Kidney dialysis affects many people, and when you treat it effectively, dialysis uh, can be a huge, huge cure. It allows people to have a better quality of life. So it's a challenge, you know, and, uh, and it's something that we accept. For me, I've been very blessed, very fortunate. And, uh, and, and I have to tell you that, you know, not only have I met so many people and we've been able to give back to the community, but uh, we have a, a young player here, uh, Jamal Crawford. And, 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 and really, this, this young man has given to the community and we should all be proud that he's a part of our community. And I, and I love him dearly, he and his wife, Tori. We're very lucky to live in a neighborhood like this. This is unbelievable. Uh, I wanna thank you for allowing me to be a part of your morning. You know, uh, we make our community better when we all participate, when we all give back. And so again, Thank you so much for having me here. Um, I uh, wanna just say that if there's anything that I can do, please let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I could be happy to answer a few questions. I won't answer a lot, <laughs> but I'll answer a few if you have any. <laughs> Thank you.